A reading from our epistle text. <coughs> so we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this love perfected, by this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also we are in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stanza from A Mighty Fortress that we just sang as we entered the church. Stanza three. Though devils all the world should feel, all eager to devour us, we tremble not, we fear no ill, they shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will, he can harm us none, he's judged, the deed is done. One little world, word can fail him. Many Luther scholars and men far smarter than me have debated what that one little word is. That one little word that can fail the devil. What is that one little word? I'm going to reread it since I goofed up the first time. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged the deed is done. One little word can fail him. So what is that word? As I said, they would have debates in seminary about what this one word was, or is, I suppose is is the correct word to use. And many people, many students with very little to do would go to these debates and would hear what these great thinkers thought about what that one word is. I'm convinced that I know, but so are they. I'll let you be the judge at the end of the sermon. Just don't yell out whether you think I'm right or you're right. When we look at the judgment, and I will get there, when we look at the judgment of mankind, we Lutherans look at the judgment very differently than other denominations. And when I talk about the judgment, I'm talking about stands, uh, verse 17, by this love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Confidence for the day of judgment. Just with that little word, I know that we are supposed to look at the judgment when Christ returns, not with fear or intrepidation, but rather with confidence. We look forward to the judgment. There are many other denominations, and I, I don't want to drop names, but uh, particularly the, the Baptist denomination, who show uh, that, that, that there is something to fear for the judgment. There are many other denominations as well. That's just the one that we have around us the most. But here's the thing. If we are constantly told that we are to look towards the judgment and that we are to be afraid of the judgment and that when we stand before God, who remembers this is your life, the show this is your life? If, if, if it's a divine this is your life and then it just shows on the screen and you say, who's this behind the screen? And it's your sin, the reason you die, all of the evil things that you and then God looks at you and says, well, where were you on that one? I see this sin. Why did you do this sin? Why have you done all these things that are evil? Look at this. You are a terrible human. Very bad at humanity. Or very good at being human. You have sinned so much, I just don't think I can let you in here. Then, Jesus' death is pointless. 
his resurrection, it doesn't matter. If we are to be judged in a, in a way that says you've been good enough to go to heaven and you've been bad enough to go to hell, then Christ coming by the Virgin Mary and all the way to His ascension doesn't matter at all. But here's the reality. Lutherans look forward to the judgment because when God judges us, He judges us based on Jesus. He looks at us through the eyes of His crucified and risen Son. And so why would we not look forward to that? Why would we not look forward to the judgment where we get to look at Jesus and God the Father looks at us through Jesus and He sees the Holy Spirit in us and He says, welcome to paradise. You can pull up a chair by Lazarus. See, I still believe that I know the answer to this one little word. And I'm going to say it as simply as I can. But I can't say it any more simply than our epistle text. Love. God is love. I was told a long time ago that if I get up in a pulpit this is before I was ordained. If I get up in a pulpit every Sunday and tell them uh, all the many and various ways that God loves them, then I will have done my job. And that never really goes very far from my thoughts, but it does at the same time because it can't get any more simple than this. God is love. No more simple. And if God is love, since God is love, then there is no fear. There's no fear for the judgment. Because if God loved us, that He would send His only Son so that He would be our, crucifi would be our crucified sacrifice, so that when God the Father looks at us, He sees His Son broken and risen, and sees how much we are loved. God is love. And I don't mean that in the 1960s way. I mean that in the very personal way. God, is, God loves you so much that He literally died for you. When we think about it in that that he loved so much that he died, then that love is not just a love, it's a sacrificial love. And where there is sacrificial love, there can be greater love. So while our love for each other may fail, may sputter, may not always come out the way that it should, God's love does. And we are perfected in that love. And I want to be very clear about this. When we are perfected in that love, we are to go out and be that love to others. We are to go out and show people that we have the love of God that is within us. And that even in this world, this, our text says it, even in this world, we have been perfected in love. And so we go out and we love others. And when we love others, we abide in the love of God. But if we abide in the love of God, and before we take it out there into the world, we've got to do it here. If we don't do it here, then everything remains hollow, or rings hollow out there. If we cannot love one another, with the love of God, we cannot love others. And love is what each commandment is built on. Christ even says as much, doesn't He? We have to love. 
Because if we don't love, and we don't use love as an active verb, then we ha have to, then this is our faith. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he doesn't really love God or his brother. Twenty. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he does not love his brother, whom he's seen, and cannot love God, whom he has not seen. If we can't love the very people that are flesh and blood before us and forgive them and put that stuff down, then we can never confess that we love God. It is not right and it is not good and it is not okay to take God's love, keep it for yourself, and withhold it from others. If we do that, we will be judged harshly. Why? Because we have kept His love and refused to love our neighbor with it. This might, be the, this might be the most important sermon that I preach all year. God is love. Go love other people. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. <laughs>